start at the Labour Party conference in Brighton. From there, I'm joined by our political editor, Andrew Marr. Andrew, uh, Tony Blair says uh, pensions are his top priority. How much activity is there on that front? Well, that's certainly something that the rest of the conference agrees with him about. Um, conferences exist on two levels most of the time. There's all the things happening on the floor, stage managed, often predictable. Behind the scenes, constant negotiation. We see trade union leaders in huddles with people from number 10, um, and I think everybody believes there will be uh, a deal at the end of this conference. Uh, one union official said to me, if we come out of this conference without being able to say to pensioners that they will get all of them a substantial, meaningful increase in their pension in April, then frankly, disaster. Then we're in real trouble. That's the big issue for them. Uh, the trouble is, of course, the Chancellor Gordon Brown's off at the IMF in Prague, and so we can't really get the, the picture of the full deal until he comes back. But I think there will be a deal. Now, Peter Mandelson's no friend of Gordon Brown, or so we're told. I gather there's been a bit of a stir over what he's been saying about the fuel crisis. Yes, well, as we heard earlier on, it's been sorry, 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 and sorry again from ministers all day, and that's fine. The trouble is um, that that then impacts on the arguments between ministers. Peter Mandelson said he thought the government had been a bit unsympathetic and high-handed, and uh, most newspapers tomorrow will be reflecting that as a personal attack on the Chancellor Gordon Brown. So it goes on. And what sort of mood are party activists in as they survey their leaders and uh, look at the poll findings recently? They're really angry, a lot of them. Um, a lot of them, particularly in the parliamentary party, junior ministers say, that over the last three and a half years, we have been buttoning our lips, we've been disciplined, we haven't been bitching, we haven't been uh, going around sticking knives into each other. Uh, sometimes we've had some very boring lunches with people like you as a result. Now, we find that the people right at the top of government uh, spreading all this stuff that's appeared in the books recently um, have been very, very ill-disciplined. Are they serious about staying in government? Can they stick together? We want to know. Andrew Marr in Brighton. Thank you. And that's it for now. There'll be more from the newsroom at ten past ten on BBC One. And, of course, there are news updates throughout the evening over on BBC News 24. <laughs> Well, the Olympic athletes are down under must have felt at home with all that rain falling on the uh, stadium Australia there in Sydney. You can see the clouds have brought the rain. You also notice there's quite a lot of clouds spinning across the Great Australian Bight down towards southern Australia. So it looks as though there's likely to be a little bit more showery rain uh, over the next couple of days in Sydney. But by Wednesday, it looks as though the sun should be out again and temperatures up to around about 28 Celsius. That's 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, talking of wet weather, we've had plenty of that today. As you can see, some very bright colours on the radar. One main band of rain moving northeastwards, and a lot of sharp showers packing in across the southwest. In fact, we've had a fair number of thunderstorms in the last few hours, particularly in the Bristol area and across Gloucestershire. Now, they'll start to fade away, although we could have some problems for travellers with all that heavy rain around. So a little bit of care and caution on the roads as we find those showers gradually disappearing, but the heavy rain, the main rain area, moving up into southern parts of Scotland before that eventually fades overnight. A lot of moisture left behind, so a lot of mist and fog as temperatures dip down to 8 or 9 Celsius underneath those clear skies. Now, the mist and fog taking a wee while to clear out of the way tomorrow, probably staying rather gloomy all day up in the Shetland Islands, but some brighter skies for most areas, and then some more rain coming into the southwest, and that will gradually spill its way further and further northwards as we go into the afternoon and the evening with top temperatures of 19 or 20 Celsius. And that's the forecast.